Today I'm going to address why it is important for us to have a spiritual practice. And I'm also going to give you some tips on some things that you can do to cultivate your own spiritual practice and some of the necessary things that are important in having a spiritual practice that we do every day, at least almost every day if we can. I know life gets hard, but if we can be consistent with having a spiritual practice, that will make a big difference in our life and change a lot of things. But before I go into talking about that, I just want to address why I'm talking about this subject. And I'm talking about this because I'm just seeing it more and more. And we are, and I'm also seeing it more and more, meaning um, not only on individual um, experience in people that I speak to, but also as a collective. And as a collective, we are in a time in our evolution where we can really no longer afford to avoid our inner life. And we have been avoiding our inner life over years and years in so many ways. And it has created the situations and the experiences and the realities that we are living today that we're not liking, that we're seeing. So I just felt very compelled to come on and talk about this because I feel that this is imperative that each of us tap into our inner life. And the other part of this as well is that when we are tapped into our inner self, we are tapped into our inner knowing, we will live a much more full, robust, desirable life. And because we can help, for, we cannot help from not doing so. When we are living only from our external existence, we are missing the majority of what life has to offer. So let's talk a little bit about what the difference between um, spiritual practices when they're more on an external level versus when they're on an internal level. And the first place that I want to go to is that it is so important imperative that each of us do some sort of personal introspection, interdevelopment work, number one. And that's really neither part of um, a spiritual practice as what I'm going to be speaking about, but I just wanted to throw that in because that's super important. I mean, that's imperative because if we can't see ourself and we can't see our shadow, then we can't see our light. And if we don't see our shadow, then we're going to keep perpetuating the same problems and cycles in our life that we, that continue to show up. And a lot of times people, many times people see that as a continual cycle. And sometimes people don't see that as a continual cycle because they just figure, I'll just get rid of that and I'll just do this. And then they they actually replicate the same thing. And many times when they're so unconscious and so much in their shadow, they don't even realize they're doing the same thing. So, okay, I don't want to get off topic here. So let's go back to spiritual practice and what that means. So what a spiritual practice means is that you're able to have a devoted time in your day that you take the time to connect with your inner self, with your inner being, with source from within. And the number one way to do that, that is going to be the best way for you to, to really get in touch with that, your, your inner self is through meditation. And meditation is something that I hear a lot of people say, well, I don't know how to meditate. I'm not a good meditator. I meditate when I go out on my walk. I meditate when I'm, you know, doing something and it's quiet. And first of all, I want to say meditation is about being able to sit in silence with yourself. And that's what meditation is. And we can make it all different kinds of ways because there are many different forms of meditation and many people get caught up in saying, well, it's really hard for me to stop my thoughts. And so my, my response to that is always, well, you know, yeah, isn't it always to hard to stop the mind? That's the whole, that's the whole premise of the practice itself is to be able to get control of the mind. And the thing is, is that, you know, Initially starting out and probably for quite some time, we're always going to have thoughts that come in because it's just part of the practice. But that doesn't mean that we're not doing it right. We're, the fact that we're sitting in that position of silence and stillness, that is, the, that is the main thing right there. That is the work right there. That is the meditative process right there. Bringing your attention to your breath. That's what it's about. And you know, you can start out really small. You can start out with a five minute meditation if that's as long as you're able to sit and then gradually work that up minute by minute. You know, you don't have to sit for hours. You don't have to sit 
for a half hour. If you can, that's lovely. If you can't, that's okay too. So I think that's the first thing is that not making this a right or wrong thing. It's, it's just a thing that you do. It is a practice that you cultivate every day to help keep you in present time, to help you connect with source, help you connect to your inner self. So important because eventually what happens is those thoughts begin to soften and then thoughts of inspiration come in. And that's the, that's the cool thing about meditation is that so much information is held in this, in this practice of silence and stillness within ourselves. So that's the number one thing. And the other, the other players in this, you know, other things that you can do, I should say, to bring in different ways in which you can have a spiritual practice is through journaling. And as part of my spiritual practice, I like to sit in meditation and majority of the days I'm able to, when I'm done, sit and journal. Either I journal and write what comes through for me or I'll go into the Akashic Records and write what's coming through that I need to hear from whatever questions I'm asking. Or the other thing that I'll do is I have this, this um, these notes that I keep. I'm gonna show them here, are my notes. And there's there's some pages of them. And these notes that I have stapled together are different things, whether it's a class or a webinar or just just information that I have written down that is, is important to me, notes that I've taken about that, I, that, that have been given to me through my own, through let's say a reading that I had or something. So the other thing that I'll do is I'll sit after my meditation and just read through all my notes. And I try to do that at least every other day now. That's kind of a new thing that I'm doing because a lot of times we go to a class, we get information and we take notes and we don't look at them again. They're, they're really powerful in the moment. We know that they mean something and they're, you know, that there's something that we um, want to integrate into our life. But if we do not create some kind of habitual relationship with them, then they just get lost. And I love to add that to my um, practice in the morning because it just brings a little bit more of um, reminders for me of things that are important to me. Um, the other thing that we can do is um, listen to music, you know, do your meditation, put some music on that feels good, music that really resonates with you, that feels soulful for you, you know, and, and it's like these things are really important because we really want to create some kind of connection to source in some way. And another thing that I find that is really powerful is um, conversations to source, to God, to life, to universe, whatever, whatever noun, verb that you need to put in there, you know, do it. Um, because that's another thing is that when we are able to be an open channel for information to come through for us and be able to express to life what it is that we are want to create or where we're at or just needing to get insight you know when we have these conversation it allows for insight to come through whether it's later in the day whether it's in that moment whether it's in a conversation we're having with somebody but it is so important for us to become an open channel for for information because we are the, the information that we need for ourselves is accessible and we have to be able to access that and that's why cultivating spiritual inner practice is so important and that's why meditation is so important and you know many of us will kind of skip this internal practice for ourselves instead do other things like yoga which yoga is great and for some people that is their spiritual practice in the morning if that's how they're using it so if you're using yoga as your spiritual practice in the morning to have contemplation and to be able to be with yourself and connect with yourself, then right on, that's, that's, that's awesome. But if you're using yoga as a form of an exercise, which it's great, it can be a great form of exercise, although it's been westernized so much, that's really not the purpose of yoga. Yoga is not an exercise, it is a spiritual practice. So I just wanna invite you to get clear on that for yourself. Like, how are you using? yoga super important for us 
And another thing is exercise. You know, exercise is a really great way for us to be with ourselves, but it really isn't part of a spiritual practice. It is exercise, it's training, you know, whatever we need it to, to be, it's, it's healthy. It gets our blood flowing and circulating. It gets the endorphins going. It can bring very po a lot of positivity to our lives, but it is not a spiritual practice. It can feel spiritual without a doubt, but it's very, it's, it's not yen. Yen is feminine. It's soft. It's gentle. It's, you know, that's the connection that we want to make. We want to do something that's yen. The yang of it, which is exercise, masculine energy, moving, that does not cultivate a spiritual practice directly. Okay. So want to go back to the meditation. That's the number one way to go here. And that is something that we're starting to see even more in even schools with young children where I know some people have seen on Facebook where they're giving meditation to children that have had detention, which is awesome. But I think what's really important is I know that there's a group of people out there and even here in Sacramento, women who are bringing meditation to schools because, just because, and that is so, so exciting. So going back to this place of where we started of why this is really important because the truth of it is is that we are evolving and in order for us to continue to evolve at the energetic rate in which life is wanting us to move to and how we are really in this place of um, of a lot of chaos in our life in our world and I say in our life because we cannot avoid what's going on in the world it affects our life and so if you feel like you have you are avoiding it the truth is that you're not because we're all being touched by it we can't help from not be some of us are conscious of us are conscious of it and there are many that are not conscious so do what you can to begin a spiritual practice do what you can to sit and meditate it is so imperative and important for your well-being that you do this because like I said in the beginning the truth is if these practices are not cultivating in your life in some way you will feel like something is missing and if you feel like something is missing it's because you're not connected to your most authentic self and our most authentic self cannot be reached externally. It can only be reached internally. And that's the truth. So I hope this was helpful. Please put some comments down below and how maybe you are doing a spiritual practice and what you do. would love for you to share your ideas so that other people can, um, you know, utilize from what you've um, created in your life. So... Thank you for being on board here and any questions, TeresaCampos.com, contact me. I would love to have a conversation with you. We can take this conversation to the next level. Okay, namaste.